So I just want to share with you this morning a little bit about what I felt God, what I believe God laid on my heart, just to encourage you this morning. And um, as we look at the surrounding regions, as we look at the world, we, we, see, we see wars, we hear rumors of wars, um, we see in the nations, we see that darkness is covering the earth, we see deep darkness and deception covering the people. So we see that the time is nearing. And uh, we, we see all these things taking place, but also in the Spirit we see the glory of God rising upon the church. God preparing the church to be the shining light, that the Gentiles will see the light and the world will come to, come to Christ. Amen? It's an exciting time. Don't let circumstances get you down. Don't get depressed in, when you see the petrol price. Don't get depressed when you have to pay 100 Rand for a bag of Buravos. My long lost scripture, I can be compared yesterday and flip it in the scene. Um, don't get discouraged by the circumstance you're seeing because know that the time is near, know that your opportunity and your time is now. Sorry, let me just say it again. Know that your opportunity and your time is now. Amen. Get it excited about that because when all these things are taking place, your opportunity is now to stand, to rise, and to shine. Because the glory of God is going to come upon your life in a magnificent way. Do not fear the circumstances. Do not fear the persecution. We see restrictions coming on all over the world. And don't think it is just... The COVID has been used as an excuse for governments to begin to bring restrictions on. But we see across the world restrictions specifically on, on Christians. Even in this nation, we see how the laws are wanting to... The, the, the law could restrict us. But stop looking in the natural, stop looking in the flesh, start looking in the spirit, because that provides the church with a divine opportunity. Amen? Please, get yourself excited. See through the eyes of faith. Hallelujah. The church needs to be really awake in this time, awake prophetically, hearing God's voice, positioning themselves in the spirit, positioning themselves even in the natural, accurately. Make sure you are in the right place where God has put you. So that you can be that shining light. Because we are the beacon of hope. We cannot be the, the, like the world, speaking the same thing as the world. Or, or in depression or in, in a pity party like the world. The world needs hope now. The world needs a light now. As they plunge into deep darkness, they need a light that needs to be shining so that they can find their way. And we need to be that light wherever we are. No matter if it's in your school, your workplace, in the university, no matter where it is in your business practice, you, you, you might just be someone who is selling agricultural instruments. Plus, good. You might just be talking to a farmer, but that is a divine opportunity because the farmers are going through a difficult time, and you might just be there just to encourage that man. And he walks out there with more hope. Hopefully some agricultural equipment too. That you sold him. <laughs> but he walks out there with encouragement. He walks out there with a hope that, wow, I can do this. God is with me. Or whatever it may be that you encourage him with. Forget about your, your vocation that does not limit you from ministering the gospel. Amen. So in this time, we as a church need to be accurate. And that includes hearing God's voice. Now many of you know me, but hearing God's voice and the prophetic has been a driving force in my life since my salvation. God, God spoke to me when I became a Christian. No one told me about Jesus. God came into my living room as a schizophrenic, Satanist, drug addict. And he spoke to me and he got me saved. He brought me to himself in a miraculous way. It was God who sent me to Bloemfontein. I think only God could have sent me from Johannesburg to Bloemfontein. I can say Bloemfontein is there. I can say first, for a start seeing here, is it a big thing for the other one on the place to come? God brought me here. God, I, I had a full-time job. I didn't have any passion for arts or anything. God just said, you must go there to Bloemfontein. And like, like, like that other disciple, can anything good come out of Bloemfontein? But God did a wondrous work in Bloemfontein in my life. God brought so much breakthrough in my life. God has sent me all over the world. It wasn't a person who sent me. It wasn't a church structure who sent me. 
And I, I thank Pastor Cornelius for helping and being obedient to the voice of God because I would come to Pastor Cornelius and say, God, Pastor, I feel God is saying I must go to Uganda for a year. And there I am off the way, off on to Uganda. God is saying I must go to Brazil. I'm off to Brazil. God is the one who brought my wife to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Gaste was ons elf jaar getrouw. Yeah, elf jaar hevelik sê. So praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord for an awesome, wonderful cherry on the top. And um, God brought my wife to me in a miraculous way. And the way the way that we we, we got married and how God confirmed the thing. God is God's voice. God's voice is the one that sent us to Georgia. We didn't even know really about Georgia or anything about Georgia, but God is the one who sent us there. So God's voice has been at the spear point of my life. All my, all my Christian life, God's voice has been the spear point of what I do and why I do things. So the most difficult thing for me is when I cannot hear God's voice about something. And even worse, when I feel or believe that I've heard God's voice, and it doesn't happen. Those two things are the most challenging things in my life. I'll never forget when God sent, sent me to Brazil. I heard as clear as day, as the day when God called me into his kingdom, God said, Brazil, nine months. Loud, clear. I had no doubt. Went to Brazil after six months. My visa got denied. My extension of my visa, six months, I was back in South Africa. I was devastated. I was devastated. Not because I had to come back to South Africa. Because God said nine months and I'm here after six. I could not understand what went wrong. What happened? And for a whole year I struggled with this question. Because remember how important God's voice is to me. And all of a sudden this is not working. And all these doubts, well, what if, if this didn't work, then that might not work. You know, you start to doubt God's voice and the faithfulness of God's voice. And after a year, I eventually just came to a place of peace. Right? I said, God, I don't understand what happened. I don't understand why it happened. But God, you are faithful. Whatever, whatever the circumstance, I know it wasn't your fault. Many of us turn, and please, I have not reached the place of perfection in this. I'm sharing with this with you because I'm working through it myself. This is something God has been dealing and is continually dealing in my life. So please, I have not attained anything or I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing my struggles with you and what God is saying to you because I believe it will be encouraging to you. Let every man be a liar, but God is true. Because God is not a man that he should lie. So the fault is not with God. It cannot be with God. If I believe God is true, and I believe God is God, and I believe in the word of God. Then something else was wrong. But I said, God, I don't know what happened. I don't know any of the circumstances. But you know what? I release it. I release it. You're a good God. And I continue to, as a child, I lay my life in your hands. I continue to trust you. When I'd done that, when I'd surrendered myself completely, God came to me and said, Conrad, it was for your sake that I took you out of Brazil early. Because there was a beautiful woman there who was a worship leader in the church that I was ministering at. And um, we started to feel these things for one another. And I approached my leadership and they had peace with us. Uh, just furthering the relationship to see it where it goes. Their leadership, we did everything properly. There was nothing under the table. It was all done the right way. And it got serious to a point where I felt she was my wife and she felt that I was her husband. And when it got to that point, things just fell apart. But what I'm not telling you is before I left, God said to me, be careful of Delilah. Now this woman is pure, she was holy, she was not Delilah, but in my life it functioned as a Delilah. There was nothing wrong with her. 
Are you with me? But when things started happening, what God said kind of like disappeared a little bit because I don't want to hear no. Are you with me? So obviously I started overstepping boundaries and I could feel God's presence when I'm with her. She was anointed. I saw her doing deliverance on a guy and I was like, wow. Sorry, that's what I'm attracted to in a woman. <laughs> Is the anointing and prophecy and all that? That's like, ah. So we talk more obvious for me, y'all. And then God just said to me, "It was for your benefit and for her benefit that I got you out early, because if we had if we had gotten married or whatever, it would have destroyed one of us. Because, okay, some red lights was she liked shoes a lot, so she bought a lot of shoes." She liked shopping malls. <laughs> so those were little red flags that I, that I was able to ignore. But she had a calling, a music calling in Brazil to, to record CDs and to lead worship and to give articulation to the Brazilian church. And that was a big no-no for me because I knew I was called elsewhere. And one of us would have had to suffer. Are you with me? But I wasn't aware of that. So God protected me. Sorry, that's a, that's a long testimony. But that was one of the places in my life where I started to understand these things. And so I want to encourage you with God's voice. In this time, I believe that we need to really be sensitive to God's voice. And I also want to encourage you in the difficulties that you may have in hearing God's voice. Or the disappointments you may have experienced in the experience and walk with God in hearing His voice. So, <clears throat> turn with me to the Bible, in the Bible with, to James 4. Now, Pastor, Pastor preached last week <clears throat> from James 4, and the very last scripture where he ended, I want to begin, and that's in verse 13, James 4 verse 13. It says, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit. It looks exactly like what I am trying to do in this time. We are saying we are going back to Georgia to do this and to do that and to do this. All right? Um, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or do that. Now, this is an apostle speaking. I'm sure you can hear God's voice. But yet he still encourages you to say, if the Lord wills. Now, please, I don't want you to take one, one little soundbite out of context. Please listen to the whole message and, and let it form a, a complete picture in your, for you. All right, Because even in hearing God's voice, you must understand you can hear wrong. You can hear inaccurately. You cannot hear at all. Maybe you thought you heard God's voice, but it wasn't God's voice. Sometimes, and a lot of the times, what God says, you put your own picture to it. And if it doesn't happen the way that it, you thought it would happen, was that now God's voice? There's many things that can happen that seem contradictory, contradictory. Contradicting to what God said. Contradictory. I think that's a word, yes. So I want to give us a few keys on how we can grow in hearing God's voice. Understanding the season that we're in and avoiding disappointment, avoiding discouragement. Many of you have maybe, and I've, 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 I've talked to many of you, where you've made business decisions or you've made important decisions about purchasing certain stuff or making certain business deals, and it didn't work out the way you planned. Sometimes you may have even seen, seemed like it was a failure. Sometimes you may have been discouraged and it didn't work out the way you thought it would work out. We need to learn how to handle these things. But first of all, God is not a man that he should lie. So the fault does not lie with God. That's the first thing you need to deal with. Do not point a finger at God. 
You said this would happen and it didn't happen. God is true. God is good. God is perfect. If we believe in God of the Bible. Are you with me? So the first thing is, don't judge God in your heart. Don't, don't accuse God. Don't blame God. And the things can be really discouraging where we put our whole hope and our faith in something and we, we, we're quoting the scriptures, we're praying it through, we're getting counsel, everything, and at the end of the day, it just doesn't happen. But let your heart not turn against God. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And if it's what he said, then the fault lies somewhere else. <laughs> so the first point I want to say is develop in hearing God's voice. You are so privileged, or we are so privileged, here in Bloemfontein, in a church that also has prophetic as a spear point. We have so many tools and instruments with which we can develop in hearing God's voice. Amen. You have day words. You have prophetic counseling. Ten questions. Let's just call it prophetic counseling, shall we? Because it may be 15 questions. Prophetic counseling. How many courses, prophetic courses? I know how many there are because I was the head of prophetic academy. There are so many courses you can do here about how to hear God's voice. How to be led by the Holy Spirit. What? How to differentiate between your thoughts and God's thoughts or God's voice. There's so many instruments you have here with which you can develop yourself. So unfortunately here in this church, claiming ignorance is not a valid excuse. Because there's divine sovereignty and human responsibility. God will do his part. You can be assured of that. God will speak. The human responsibility is for you to hear and to learn how to hear. That is your responsibility. God is not going to do it for you. Are you with me? God will train you. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to be sensitive to His voice. But you have got to bring your part to the table and you've got to equip yourself in hearing God's voice. If you are struggling to hear God's voice and you haven't even tried to do day words yet, you cannot claim ignorance. Yeah, but I don't like day words. It doesn't fit with me nicely. What if it doesn't work out? What if it does work out? And you'll find that it does fit with you quite nice. It will help you. It's a training tool. It's not the Bible. It's not everything God says. <clears throat> not the yes and amen of everything in your life, but it's a training tool to equip you to hear better. Prophetic counseling. Training yourself. Do spiritual gifts. That's one of the courses where we learn how to hear God's voice practically. Where you can learn how to access and understand how the Holy Spirit speaks to me in my daily life. That's your responsibility for you to get understanding. Amen. We can't claim ignorance anymore. <coughs> Day words, questions, the word. It's your responsibility to get stuck into the word, not God's. It's not God's responsibility to wake you up and tell you to read the word. It's your responsibility to wake up and to read the word. Not as a law, but with a hunger to hear God's voice. And the more you read and the more you spend time with God in his word, the clearer His will becomes to you. But that's your responsibility. You cannot use your work as an excuse. You cannot use your busy, busy schedule as an excuse. Sorry, I have a little time, so I'm a little bit more straightforward. And maybe the Russian influence on me has made me a little bit more rachet. So forgive me if I'm not as tender as I, as I, as I used to be. But it's your responsibility. Your responsibility to get into the Word and to spend time with the Word. And that's where God will begin to speak to you more. Other people. But other people can also hear wrong. So 
You've got to learn how to discern God's voice in other people. You've got to learn how to discern God's voice in the Word. How many times have you taken a scripture and you've quoted it and you believe it? And no, no, no. You could be taking that scripture out of context. And the scripture could not, will not necessarily apply to your situation in that moment. Like the name it, claim it, and frame it movement. That may not be your house that you are claiming. <coughs> Maybe the person who lives there that it belongs to. Unless God has given it to you. So we need to exercise discernment. We need to grow in discernment. And that we can do through training and equipping ourselves. Things we need to deal with. Our thoughts versus God's voice. You can see it. Now, please, honestly evaluate your own life. I'm not here to condemn or to convict anybody. But evaluate your life. Listen to how you talk. And please, I understand we all have the best intentions. And it can be sincere. I, I, I speak to myself too. We can be sincere. I was speaking to God and God said this to me. And then the next day, I was speaking to God and God said that to me. And then... They don't really match up. Are you with me? We, we, we need to respect God's voice to a certain extent that when we say God said, you are 100% sure on your faith that God said. Are you with me? Blase about God's voice is what causes conservative Christians to run away from the Holy Spirit. I've seen it. When, when we as Christians are just saying, Oh, God said that, God said that, God said this, God said that, God said that. And it's not necessarily that God said it. It's just something I felt or something I believe. Instead, say, I felt in my spirit this. And the more confident about how I am in what God said, I can increase the importance of my language. Because when a prophet said God said, God better have said if he's a prophet. But you as a believer, the same thing. We need to have respect for God's voice. Because sometimes it's just my intuition. Sometimes it's my, my, my thoughts that are, that are leading me. And it could be right, it could be wrong. But it's not necessary to say that God said. Because this is where the confusion can come in. Is if God is saying everything and it doesn't happen, then I question, did God say that? So we need to learn to discern between our thoughts and God's voice. Okay, we've dealt with ignorance. We can no longer cl claim ignorance. It's your responsibility. <coughs> False perspectives. On the word, for instance. So many wrong things have been justified through the word. Here in South Africa, in a local perspective. Racism, apartheid. So many things have been justified. So many false doctrines. Even the devil used the scriptures to tempt Jesus. We need to understand that your understanding of the scriptures could be wrong. Could be inaccurate maybe. Are you with me? I went to Bible school and there were certain things that I learned in Bible school that were incorrect in the scriptures. God had to show me certain things. This that you learned there at Bible school was not right. When I'm reading the Word, with the best intent, and please, I'm not questioning the sincerity of your hearts. I'm just saying we as human beings can be mistaken. Men cannot be wrong. They can only be mistaken. Just let's get that clear. I'm never wrong, but sometimes I'm mistaken. I'm, I'm, by the laughter, I'm sure you can all understand I'm joking. Okay? <laughs> but we can be mistaken in what we interpret as God's voice. Whatever channel it is received from. And you must be humble enough to admit that. No matter how certain you are, and it's not to bring in doubt, please understand me, you must have the maturity that it's not doubt. But it's humility and 
there's no English word for it like it, but teachableness is a new English word we have come up with. Teachableness. I must be able to be teachable enough. I'm speaking as someone who is the prophetic academy head, whose driving force is God's voice. I do prophetic counseling. I, I've been doing day words for many years. I can hear wrong, and I must be able to admit that. Because if I can admit that, I am open to instruction whether I'm hearing right or wrong. But if I, can't, if I don't believe I can't hear wrong, I will be so blinded that I just run with what I believe, and I'm not able to receive input saying, hey, I don't think that is necessary, I don't think correct. We need to be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit, even in how we hear God in the sense of, I can hear wrong. We're facing some decisions we need to make in this time, and we have got a lot of messages encouraging us in a certain direction, some even saying we feel the Lord is saying this. I flat out don't believe that that is the direction we need to go. But does that mean I just discount it? No. I was giving an example to some friends we were talking to yesterday where Joseph was sharing a dream, his dream with his family, his brothers and sisters and his father, about how they'll bow down, etc., etc., etc. And the brothers were very angry at this, and the mother was this. And even the father was saying, no, how can you dare say that, that we will bow down before you? But the scripture says, and he kept it in his heart. The father took what the son said and put it in his heart and kept it there, even though vocally he disagreed. Because there was something about God that it could be God. Are you with me? So even though I totally disagree with the direction we, that, the, the, this, that this line is in, it's going to be part of my 10 questions or 15 questions or 20 questions, whatever it may be. <laughs> Not because I believe this is what God is saying, but because I, 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 I love brothers and sisters who saying, have you thought about this? We feel this. God is saying this. I mean, the, when Paul was on his way to Jerusalem, the people were prophesying to him not to go to Jerusalem because of the dangers. They were warning him and saying, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. What did Paul say? I'm bound in the Spirit. I'm on my way there. So were these people... Trying to mislead him, where they just no, out of a caring heart, out of sincerity, in spirit, they could pick up something, but they weren't articulating it necessarily. Are you with me? We need to grow. Is it enough psalm at night? Okay. I will not see a mark. I'm always not here. It may meet my angles. The second point is position yourself accurately. Position yourself accurately. This means growing in God, growing in the Spirit, growing in the Word, drawing closer in worship and intimacy. Growing in God, growing in the Spirit, growing in the Word, drawing closer to God in worship and intimacy. I need to be positioning myself in the Spirit. I need to be developing and growing my spirit, man. Strengthening myself in the Word. Strengthening myself in faith. All all the while positioning myself in the Spirit in the right place. Hallelujah. I'm not just talking about my Spirit. I'm talking about even positioning yourself in the right place in your job, in your, in your school, in your university, wherever it may be. I'm really still encouraged. I keep my, my little uh, book map He's from Dr. Jonathan David that he sends out every year. And there was one that he, he sent out about strategic people positioned in strategic places. For God to move. I must believe that God has put me where I am. Strategically. So that he can accomplish something. Hallelujah. I understand people's concern when they say. Listen the war there in Ukraine. Because it's just above us. There's not a claim sticky from Russland. But this is in Ukraine. And they've already invaded Georgia before. So people, out of consideration and care, say, don't you think you should just consider staying in South Africa for a little bit, just to see what happens there? But I want to encourage you. We believe that we are positioned in that place for a time such as this to create something, for God to do something miraculous. 
I was in Uganda during a war. So I know what it feels like to be in those circumstances. And boy, it is the... I'm not talking about the circumstance I'm talking about for me. It's the best place for me to be. Because my spirit is so alive and energized because of the heavenly opportunity to be the light of the world. We pray for, we pray for wars to stop. We pray for things to happen. But somebody must be there to do something. I was not in Ukraine anymore. You know, maybe if I was a, a non-believer, I would take my sniper rifle and go hide in a building. But no, that's not what God has called me to do. But I believe that I'm strategically positioned. But how do you know if you're strategically positioned? How can you be strategically positioned? By developing yourself, by positioning yourself spiritually. Praying in tongues. Spending time in the Word. Developing your spirit. Getting yourself trained. There's so many things, training courses you can do here. Not necessarily mime, although God can do one is to mime or dance. I wonder if you want to, Pastor, Pastor Cornelius, I wonder if he's convinced some of you men yet to be flagged. But no, I'm not talking about that. I'm to, not necessarily talking about that. But there's so many courses regarding the prophetic, regarding governing church patterns, these type of things that will help you to position you mentally and spiritually for what God wants to do in and through your life. But again, that is your responsibility. You must position yourself. Are you with me? God is not going to position you spiritually in that sense. It's a partnership together. God will position you as you develop yourself, as you begin to line, your, line yourself with what God saying. Align yourself. Hallelujah. Okay. Accuracy in the word is in B, but we've dealt with that. Understand, get accuracy in the word. Realize you can be interpreting things a little bit off. <coughs> but that is why you need to walk with leaders. If I have a theological question or something that is revelation to me, something new, I will bring that to leadership and say, wow, I had this revelation. And I'll wait for input. Because sometimes my revelation can be not revelation. Okay? It can be misinterpretation. So, develop in hearing God's voice. Position yourself accurately in the last one. And this is, this is the one I wanted to actually share the most. Is rely on covenant and intimacy. Not gifting and calling. Covenant is a key thing that I want to share with you this morning. Covenant. But the reason why I need to share the rest is because you cannot just take the sound bite of covenant. You need to be doing everything in your part of the covenant. Because the covenant is an agreement between two people. You and God. Are you with me? It's not just God's responsibility to do everything. You have a responsibility within the covenant. And those first two steps is part of that responsibility. In the covenant. Because if I just highlight what I'm about to highlight, you'll think you have to do nothing and you, God will do everything. No, we are not like that. There's a responsibility that you have in your covenant with God. But we need to rely on covenant, not on calling. Just because you're a prophet does not mean you are positioned accurately, does not mean God is going to reveal everything. Just because you're a Christian does not mean everything is sorted. You need to rely completely on covenant. And the whole thing that Pastor said last weekend in regards to that last part was dependency on God. And I cannot tell you, and this is why I'm sharing, this is a personal thing for me, because there's been times in this year where I have nothing to rely on except my covenant with God. Where I don't understand where things are working against me, where I'm confused or where I'm discouraged. Some of you fathers may understand this personal example, where my son is burning up with fever, that he, that he is so delirious that we don't understand what's happening. As a father, you feel helpless. You can pray with faith, God heal him, God heal him, and it's not getting better. And you know the scripture, you know the word, you know God's will. 
you, you can hear God's voice and it's just not happening. And you feel helpless. Do you question God at that time? God is not a man that he should lie. It's difficult to stand like that when you see the circumstances. But all you can rely on is covenants. When you feel helpless, when you feel that you, you have no more strength left, where there's no other, there's no other solution. You can feel beyond, like Paul says, we felt beyond our lives. We felt like there was nothing left. And all you can hang on is that covenant with God. Because we don't understand everything. I can preach to you keys of how to hear God's voice. But at the end of the day, I don't hear God's voice perfectly either. I don't have all the answers. Sometimes I don't understand why things didn't work out. But as I said in covenant, first understand your human responsibility. Developing yourself. In hearing God's voice. Positioning yourself in that covenant. Because I've always, when, especially in the area of provision, I always, when I'm speaking to God, I'm like, God, it's not you I doubt. Because I've seen God's provision work miraculously in my life. It's not God that I doubt. It's myself. Have I done everything properly? Have I sought God in the right areas? Have I heard the strategies from Him? Have I been obedient in what I must be doing in that area? Those are the questions that rise in my heart. But you know what? If I position myself that good, if I've developed, if I've brought my human responsibility, all I can now rely on is covenant. And if it doesn't happen, it's not God's fault. Even though I still don't understand. Are you with me? Because we are in a time when things shift so quickly. Things happen so quickly. Things change so quickly. We need to be accurate in hearing God's voice. Flexible to understand that the way I interpreted what God said is maybe not that way. Because it will work out differently. Like Vicky said, the way we thought certain aspects of our ministry would work out in Georgia did not happen like that. It happened in a better way. Are you with me? And even if it doesn't happen in a better way, Paul and his, Paul and his, uh, his, his, uh, his, uh, his entourage were going into Asia to, to preach the word. And the Holy Spirit resisted them and said, no, don't go there. And the next day they received, they received a vision of a man in Macedonia calling them to another place. Were Paul and them not being led by the Spirit, the top apostle of the word? In my opinion, I love Paul the apostle. He's this major apostle. Were they not hearing, were they not being led by the Spirit and going to Asia? Well, clearly not, because the Holy Spirit didn't go that way. Why were they not being led by the Holy Spirit? They're supposed to be apostles. They were preaching the gospel wherever they went. Are you with me? And maybe they, we don't know the situation, but God changed the strategy. God shifted them. Are you with me? But if I am stubborn, in this area of hearing God's voice. No, we must go to Asia. That's what God said. Did God say that? I must be able to be moved. Like that scripture that Pastor says, be alert, focus on Him. See how He is moving. Because it can shift quickly, it can change quickly. Don't be stuck in a box of how you see things and how things must happen. Don't put a box around what God has said because many times that picture, that coloring in that you did is not the same as God's picture that He has. Hello? Are you, are you still here? So rely on covenant. So the next scripture I want to give you is this. After your human responsibility, the first one was Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that He should lie. And I can rely on that completely. God is good. God is true. There is no fault with Him. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Hallelujah. 
I can rely on that he is, he is 100% true and he's not a man that he should lie. 2 Timothy 2.13 God is faithful even when we are faithless. Even when I, when, I, when I lack faith or my faith is faltering or where I don't understand or where I'm hopeless, God is faithful. Irrespective of my circumstances, irrespective of how things look. I'm sure when Paul was bitten by a snake, they, there could have been some people that questioned his faith. Oh, he obviously has some sin in his life. That's why that happened. Or when he was shipwrecked. Or when he didn't have food. All these circumstances happen. Was it because he lacked faith? Did he not hear God's voice? What was the problem? Things happen. And sometimes it can be things that are not pleasant. And this is another false perspective that we need to be careful of. God works all things to the good. But it didn't mean those things came from God. He will work the circumstances from your good to your good. Even if the devil tried something, it will work out to your advantage. But God did not necessarily initiate it. Are you with me? The reason why I say we've got to be careful is because you can have a false perspective that everything negative that happens in your life is God's will. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sometimes it's our own stupidity that brings upon that nonsense. Sometimes it's our own wrong decision making. Sometimes it's our own compromise that brings those problems. And many times God will work to the good. Are you with me? But it wasn't necessarily God is trying to teach you a lesson. God may teach you a lesson through it, but He didn't bring that problem. You may have brought it upon yourself. Are you with me? Because you were not accurately positioned. So we need to be aware of that perspective. All right, God is faithful even when we are faithful, faith, faithless. 2 Timothy 2, verse 13. Genesis 15, verse 12. Dr. Jonathan David talks about this in Covenant. Many times you will be a sleeping, what he calls a sleeping partner in Covenant. Where God is making covenants in in, in this scripture with Abraham and cuts the beerson off or whatever the animals there were. And the Bible says that God put Abraham into a deep sleep and continued with this process of making the covenant. Because sometimes God is going to carry you when you cannot walk. I can experience many times in my life. and I don't want to cry again. So I'll think of old examples. Many times when I was struggling as a young man with different sins in my life and things like that, and you know, no matter how hard I try, I conquer stocky for that near sitting. And I would be so depressed, so discouraged in different areas of my life. I just wanted to give up. You know, uh, uh, looking at the curtains at the church there in Fountain of Life, I remember Tani Anna would be preaching, and every set, every Sunday there would be an altar call, and it doesn't matter what the altar call was, I was there because I needed it. <laughs> I, I because I was struggling with sins, I was struggling with things, and I just needed help. I felt like I needed to get saved every Sunday until the Holy Spirit said to me, "I came one day. I, I can't remember what the altar call was for, probably healing or something." But I'm there, and the Holy Spirit said, what are you doing here? Uh, This is in my mind now. I'm here for prayer. Go back and sit down. You don't need to be here. Why did I share that example? (laughs) Sleeping partner. I wanted to give up so many times, but there's so many times where God just carried me. Or where God took me by the scruff of my neck and said, stand up. Keep on going. Forget your feelings. Oh, but I sinned. I'm such a bad person. You hate me. Oh. Did you repent? Yes. I forgive you. Doesn't matter how you feel. No. Believe the truth. I forgive you. No, but I'm so bad. You know, I'm so horrible. I'm so horrible. I pity myself. Get over your feelings. Get up. Keep on going. Many times when you cannot carry yourself, when you cannot be strong and in my strength, in my prophetic strength, in my faith, 
there's going to be times where God is going to carry you. And that's, that's, that's because of covenant. Are you with me? And you need to rely on that. That when things are hopeless, God will be there. Amen? Genesis 15, 12. The next one, Ezekiel 36, verse 27. The Spirit will move you to do His will. Because of your covenant. This is the covenant that I will make with my people. I will, I will give them a heart of flesh. Take out their heart of stone. I will put my Spirit within them. And I will cause them to walk in my principles, in, in my commandments. The Holy Spirit will move you to obey the Word of God. To walk in His will. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 36, 27. The last example. Because of, because of intimacy, because of relationship, because of covenant, many times you'll find yourself walking in the will of God without even knowing you're doing it. Without even hearing a booming voice from heaven. David is sitting in the temple. I didn't write the scripture down. Please forgive me, but I believe it's there. David is sitting in his palace and he's, and he says, ah, I'm sitting in this wonderful house. But my God is sitting in that little temple. I'm going to build God a house. And God sends the prophet, I think it's Nathan the prophet, and God, Nathan begins to prophesy and speak to, speak to David. He says, throughout all generations, I have never dwelt in a house. I've never asked somebody to, I've never even asked somebody to build me a house. But I will build for myself a house. But David, it won't be you. Because your hands are full of blood. It will be your son. You can prepare it for you. But David, just sitting in his own thoughts, not necessarily praying in tongues or, you know, having a divine revelation in the third heavens, just thinking to himself, just thought, wow, I'm sitting in this house. And he was able to pick up the heart of God because God wants to build himself a house that he's never done before. Are you with me? And David, in, just in his natural walk, was able to pick up the heart of God. Why? Because he walked with God in intimacy. Because he had a covenant with God, he was able to pick up the heart of God. And many times you'll find yourself walking. For those who do day words, you might experience this on a regular basis when you forget to read your day word. Sorry, am I the only one who forgets that? Okay. <laughs> When you forget to read your day word and you come back that night and you read your day word and you see how it happens. Unawares, you walk naturally in God's will. That form in itself, it's, it's first a repentance, but then it's an encouragement. Remember, God works for the good. He will even use your unfaithfulness to help you. But it's encouragement that even though I was not completely aware of this word, I hadn't read this word, I was still able to walk in it because of covenant, because of relationship, because of intimacy. Because you positioned yourself close to God so that you're walking with Him. You may have smelt the flower accidentally while God is walking, but you're still on the same path. God is good. Amen. And God will carry you. God will lead you. But Ever more, even now more than ever, sorry, even now more than ever, we need to cling on to God in covenant. We need to develop ourselves in hearing God's voice because we are living in a time and season where deception will abound, where circumstances will increase, where restrictions will increase, and your liberties, they will try to take it away. And if you are still operating according to the thought patterns of the world, if you are still functioning in your own will and ways and your own way of thinking, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough anyway. But if you are still living according to the world and the natural and the flesh, you're going to find life very difficult. But God has given you a key. That even when there seems to be no way, God will make a way. But you need to be alert to that. Where is the way? You need to be able to identify the door. How do we do that? Developing my, myself and how I hear God's voice. Positioning myself accurately. Relying on covenant. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet and let's just pray, please. Father, we just thank you for your faithfulness.
us. You are a good God. We worship you. We love you. Father, we thank you for your embrace and your strong hold upon our lives. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And thank you that through Jesus Christ, we can enter into this covenant of salvation with you, Lord. And we rely completely upon you, Lord, that even when our strength fails, when our faith fails, when we cannot hear accurately, no matter what circumstances come our way, thank you, Lord, that you are there. You are there. You are not a man that you are, should lie. You are a perfect God. You are a good heavenly Father. And thank you that we can rely completely on that, knowing that your word is true, your promises are true, and you are good. And Father, I really just pray that wherever we're struggling, in whatever aspect I've spoken of today, and whatever discouragements we've had in the past regarding hearing your voice or walking in faith in something that we thought you, you had planned for us and it didn't work out, thank you that we can lay all that discouragement behind. Forgive us if we have blamed you or looked at you as the one who has some fault. Forgive us, Lord. And we just lay it all aside and we renew our faith in you. We renew our faith in your word and your voice that we can step out in boldness and obedience to what you say. Encourage us in your word, in, in your voice, Holy Spirit. I pray right now that you'll come, Holy Spirit. Strengthen and encourage each and every one of us in how we hear God's voice, in how we experience your leading and guiding. Strengthen your church. Strengthen your church that we may be able to discern what is of the Spirit, what is of the flesh. Discern what is false, what is true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen.